Hello, I'm Paterno S. Makel. Welcome to Rappler. We're now in Davao City and with us today is Mr. Philip Dizon. He's the owner of Crocodile Park and he's also the president of the American Chamber of Commerce here in Davao City. He's here to talk to us about the business potential of Davao. Good day, Mr. Dizon. Hi. Mr. Dizon, first of all, we'd like to know more about Crocodile Park. Can you tell us more about this tourism destination here in Davao? Yeah, itong Crocodile Park uh, was born out of the, uh, the fascination for the survival instinct of crocodiles. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the oldest living uh, animal and at that, the most expensive when it comes to skin. You know, So uh, it's got great uh, export potential and uh, uh, conservation also. We need to conserve uh, certain species of crocodiles and that's the Philippine crocodile. And uh, being a wildlife rescue center, we're compelled to uh, take care of uh, Philippine crocodiles also. So we breed them, uh, captive breed them, and raise them, and release them in the wild. Sir, why did you choose Davao as the site for the crocodile park? Well, number one, I'm from Davao. Well, number two, uh, uh, it just happened that the crocodiles are available, so... So from there, uh, it became a park. Mm -hmm. And now it's uh, the number one tourist destination here in Davao. Mm -hmm. And from Crowdal Park, we ventured into river rafting, uh, other adventure activities such as Maxima. Mm -hmm. You know, Maxima Resort in Samal. Uh, we invented the only giant tarpaulin slide in the world that drops you in the sea. Mm -hmm. And the, tar the giant tarpaulin slide is 40 meters. So, Mr. Dizon, what makes Davao a good place for a business like Crocodile Park? Davao is the, the Philippines' best kept secret. Okay? Uh, Boracay, uh, Bohol, uh, uh, but Davao is so vast, you know, and it has uh, all the uh, natural uh, uh, gift. The mountain, the highest mountain in the Philippines, from here, only an hour away, uh, and it has the city, uh, the third biggest city in the Philippines, the safest city in the Philippines. Uh, and of course, we have the sea, and we have the Samal Island, Talikud Island, uh, we have Mati, uh, two hours away, and we have Jansan. So we're very diverse when it comes to environment. We have the mountain, we have the city, and we have the sea, and we have the east coast of Mindanao, also, which also has a different environment. So aside from that, we have the cultural diversity, and because Davao being a melting pot of uh, all Filipino, uh, uh, of all Filipinos, we also have that uh, diversity when it comes to uh, personalities. You call Davao the Philippines' best kept secret. Why do you call it a secret? Because uh, of the perception of the uh, most of Filipinos that uh, Mindanao is a troubled land. Parts of Mindanao are troubled land, but uh, Davao generally is secure. So uh, a typical Manilenyo, oh, punta ka ng Davao, di ba? Mama kidnap ka doon, ano? No, Davao is the safest uh, city in the Philippines. Uh, uh, there is no uh, kidnapping here in our region. From General Santos all the way to Agusan, Butuan. Uh, well, the Sambuanga Peninsula is a different story. Mm -hmm. And why is this the safest, sir? Well, because of our leadership. Uh, number one, our uh, mayor, our uh, local government units in the provincial level are also very uh, 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 conscious of uh, peace and order because, uh, you know, nga, the typical uh, branding of uh, Mindanao, uh, which when you say Daba, we're part of it, is uh, it's an insecure place. That's why everybody's focused on security and it ended up being the most secure destination in the Philippines. So how are businesses doing now here in Davao? Well, uh, I think you've been here for a few days. I think you've seen uh, that uh, the city is very dynamic, uh, traffic everywhere, uh, buildings everywhere. Uh, I may declare that it may not be the Philippines' best kept secret anymore. <laughs> BPOs are here, but you see, 
there's still a lot of rooms to improve. Eh? Agro-industry needs to uh, look at the different uh, potentials such as cacao, coffee, uh, aside from the banana. So I'm encouraging also, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to push for uh, uh, me myself, I'm going to get into that uh, bandwagon. Cacao. Philly, cacao can be grown under the coconut. Eh? So uh, at a certain age, 25 years of age, when a coconut is about 25 years, you can already start planting cacao underneath because uh, it already has enough sunlight penetration. And Dabo region, the biggest uh, cacao region in the whole Philippines. So that means we have the most uh, land available for cacao. And being uh, so uh, rich in volcanic silt because of the gift of Mount Alomo, Mount Apo, the Santa Cruz volcano, we have the richest one of the most richest agricultural land in the world. And being of different elevation, therefore we have tropical fruits, we have uh, subtropical uh, fruits, we have uh, subtropical vegetables such as lettuce. So we are a, we are a place that uh, has it all. But what's lacking is industry. You see, uh, Kahit na maraming gift ng Dabao, maraming pa rin naiwan eh. Uh, uh, according to uh, data, there's still uh, 6%, 7% un under unemployed, but there's 20% underemployed. So, uh, agriculture can only absorb so much of that 20%. Uh, uh, so therefore, we're uh, gearing up so the uh, American Chamber, the uh, European Chamber, the Japanese Chamber, the Canadian Chamber. We organized the uh, Southern Mindanao Growth Corridor. We're introduce, introducing our region as, uh, uh, as an investment destination, both for tourism, for agriculture, but more of industry and uh, manufacturing and assembly. So we are the Philippine gateway to the ASEAN free trade zone. Having such uh, natural gifts as the most self-sustained region in the whole country, having uh, the most resource in the whole country, you know Mindanao has 50% of all Philippine minerals. We produce uh, food for Visayas and, Minan and Luzon. So it's a self-sustained island. And with the population growth between general population density of 7 million between General Santos, Digos, Dabao, Tagum, Mati, uh, that's already the infrastructure already there, four lane roads, electricity, communication. Uh, we're introducing this region as the assembly and manufacturing hub. There are PESA zones, but there are no locators. So uh, we're uh, telling the world that uh, our region is open for business. Sir, why uh, <coughs> automobile assembly? Why not other industries? Whatever industry that uh, gives jobs to people and utilize the power the energy, the uh, record uh, that uh, came out lately is that uh, from now up to year 2020, it is only Mindanao that has excess power. Uh -huh. This record, uh, this information came from uh, the Philippine Power Sector Update, Department of Energy, General Membership Meeting, 26, 26th of August, 2014. Here is the graft. This is the existing power supply, the one that are being built, and the one, the demand, the red part is the demand, yeah. and the gray part is the supply, excess supply. Uh -huh. Okay? So, uh, my friends, such as uh, Alex Alcantara, uh, Boitis' family, the uh, uh, Guchanon family, San Miguel, uh, 
Crystal, uh, Crystal uh, Sugar. They turned their uh, central into a power plant also. By year 2017, Mindanao has an excess power 1,800 megawatts, and that's all there in the schedule. Okay. We have to maximize that. Ang tanong ko, where they gonna sell their power? Okay. There already is an existing power supply here, hydro. The demand's only there in the red. Ito ngayon ang uh, ang mga, pak, mga coal plants that are being built and also the biomass. And now there's a push for more geothermal exploration. So when it comes to from now up to year 2020, it's only Mindanao that has excess power. And you look at Visayas. Visayas is going to have brownouts right here. They don't have any comfortable level at all. The same with Luzon. Luzon is here by year uh, next year by uh, March. You're already in the brink of uh, you have no comfortable level at all. It's here there. See? The red is the demand. The blue is the supply. The gray is the comfortable level, meaning para walang brown out talaga. Kasi if this part of the blue bars down a little bit. Some parts of Luzon we already experienced power. So, sir, uh, where does that come in uh, in terms of uh, the business climate here in Davao? The Philippine economy is being uh, pushed uh, seven, eight percent economic growth by uh, uh, sixty percent consumer, consumer spending. The Filipinos getting richer, uh, spending more, and the other forty percent by uh, the BPO. Uh, no, BPO kind of flat a little bit. Uh, by export, see we're having record export, so that means manufactured finished goods. So that's where your suggestion comes comes in, the assembly. Yes, because uh, if if the Philippines is to sustain its economic growth, which is propelled forty percent by export, that means industry, that means assembly, manufacturing. No, so. Uh, Kasi BPO is considered an export. Sir, let me shift a bit to uh, the relationship between the local government and businesses. Because Davao is pretty known to, for its uh, law and order, peace and order. That's what business like. Uh, peace and order, a level playing field. You know our mayor here, Davao City, has, uh, our mayor has a uh, decree here that uh, any delayed business permit the business bureau must write a report why that business permit is delayed after three days of application. Or else? Well, of course, the mayor is going to ask why is it delayed. He wants to make it easy for the businessman. Uh, there's a level playing field here. There's no, uh, I guarantee that, there's no uh, under the table arrangement here. Everything's black and white and clear. But sir, uh, we also know that the Commission on Human Rights uh, has often complained about the style of the mayor. Uh, he has been linked to uh, human rights abuses in relation to his fight against lawlessness. So what's the effect of, uh, of this on businesses? Well, I, I'm not in a position to uh, to uh, talk about human rights, but uh, from, uh, per, from the perspective and I'm not even in a position to say our mayor is involved in that. No, uh, he's just linked. I link. Well, link is link. Yeah. So, what's the effect of that on businessmen? Tell you the truth, the Babanyo likes it. That uh, there is, uh, I don't know, a uh, tight uh, hold on uh, uh, criminality here because. Uh, We've gone through the NPA uh, trouble uh, and we realized that uh, for uh, Davao to uh, prosper, we need uh, number one, uh, a level playing field government. Number two, we need a uh, uh, very uh, 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 benevolent dictator type government. Okay? What's and a benevolent uh, dictator type of government? A benevolent type of dictator is uh, the guy that rules on a heavy-handed, but uh, for the benefit of the people. 
like Lee Kuan Yew. Marami naman ang ganyan na leader eh. Pero may mga leader naman na dictator na hindi benevolent. <laughs> diba? Would you propose this kind of benevolent dictatorship uh, up to be applied in the Philippines? Well, in the Philippine scenario, it's more of the... Uh, uh, well, since you mentioned it, maybe. Would you want Duterte as president? <laughs> yes. I want our mayor to be president. Because uh, there's too much... Uh, uh, there's too much uh, na ano tayo eh. we, we were democratic, then we got compressed by uh, the martial law rule, uh, the, the dictatorship of Marcos. Uh, and then uh, uh, we got freedom and a lot of Filipino abuse freedom. Uh, but again, it abused abuse the democratic uh, principles, uh, abused the democratic uh, institution, uh, corruption, uh, abuses. Uh, here we don't see that here. And just going back to business, how will this uh, Duterte presidency probably help business in the Philippines? Well, number one, level playing field. All right. Uh, our mayor is a very simple man. He's not uh, materialistic. Uh, 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 I, I, I know him. Uh, he will play by the rules of level playing field, uh, no favoritism, uh, uh, clean government, uh, and you know, a big part of the Philippines is uh, being of island geography, geographic built. We have, we also have an island mentality. The Ilongos are Ilongos, the Kamampangan are Kamampangan, the, the, the Ipugaos are Ipugaos, the, uh, the, the, the uh, Taosug are the Taosug. Uh, ibang mindset ng every island eh. I think, I think it's about time. Uh, of course, because of the mismanagement of our national government, Manila, uh, uh, everybody gets uh, affected by that. Uh, I believe it's about time to start the debate on uh, a federal form of government. That would be a long debate, sir. Well, so be it. But again, uh, let the debate start already. Okay. okay? Sir, uh, my last question. If I were a businessman, how would you sell Davao to me? Come here, observe yourself. Find out, ask the other businessman. It's the only way for you to, to find out, is to come over here. You touch base with the American Chamber. <laughs> we link you to all the PESA zone. Uh, there's, you see also very important is the strategic location of uh, Mindanao and especially Davao. DTI is priming Davao to become a uh, shipping hub for ASEAN because the uh, shipping hub of ASEAN ngayon is, in, or is in Singapore and Singapore is already getting congested. Wala na silang place to grow their ports eh. and the economy, ASEAN economy is growing. So DTI uh, in their plan is going to spend about 60 billion pesos to improve the port facility here. Uh, so we become a cargo transport hub for our region. So that by itself is a big, uh, a big uh, catharsis to uh, the growth of our region. So being a hub, because if you take a look at the map, here is Mindanao, Davao, here is uh, ASEAN region, here is Hong Kong, China, and here is Australia, New Guinea. So we are in the crosshair. But the problem dito. Uh, even though the Australasian fly, fly, fly over us, uh, they have not realized the potential of the Mindanao market and the Bimpiaga market. And we have to realize this potential yes. soon. And the Bimpiaga, uh, in the past 20 years, they've been talking about the Bimpiaga, but nothing has been happening because uh, they also forgot uh, the initiator of Bimpiaga. 
uh, have not uh, really put uh, serious uh, consideration in the connectivity issue to a major economic hub, which is Hong Kong. Yeah. What is common to the Manado people, to the Saba people, the Brunei people, is to get connected within each other and then connect to a major hub such as uh, uh, Hong Kong and Australia. And we are on a cross. Every day flights fly over here. That go to uh, Hong Kong, go to uh, uh, Australia. But they never land because we're directly on the flight path. And sir, you think Dava will play a very important role in the region? Yes, when the time comes, na we're, uh, ano. you see, if DTI can conceive the idea that this is going to be the next Singapore because of logistical issues, because we are on the cross here, see, the same with the airplanes. Do you want Davao to be the next Singapore? Well, yes, but uh, we have to do a lot of uh, planning and the political will to make it happen because uh, we don't want uh, a uh, growth that's really not planned properly because normally a growth that's not planned properly ends up in chaos. So we need uh, more planning, more uh, coordination, more direction. Thank you very much, Mr. Dizon. We've been talking to Mr. Philip Dizon, the owner of Crocodile Park here in Davao City. Thank you for joining us.